Hi everyone, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. I hope you're doing swell and you've been reading lots of good things. I am here with another book haul video of books that publishers have kindly sent me and that are all being published in the month of May, all of which I'm really interested in reading, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about them and why I'm so eager to get to them. The first two books are by authors who I've read before and really enjoyed their first novels, so I'm so eager to read these second novels of theirs. First one, I don't have an actual physical copy for, I have a digital copy. It's being published in the US by Picador, and that is No One Knows How to Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Satayal. So I loved his first book called Blue Boy. It is such an inventive and heartfelt coming-of-age novel. This new novel, No One Can Pronounce My Name, is about a family of Indian descent living in Cleveland. There is a man in his early 40s who still lives at home with his mother. His sister has died, and to sort of memorialize his sister and cheer his mother up, he dresses in drag and uh, sort of pretends to be her. But it's also the story of a woman he becomes friends with who writes sort of saucy romance novels, I think. So uh, it sounds like a great story and I can't wait to read it. The next novel is by Ben Ferguson. It is called The Other Hoffman Sister. It's published by Little Brown. So I read Ferguson's first novel, The Spring of Caspar Meyer, uh, which is such a like interesting take on a World War II story through the personal lives of a few German characters who live through it. This new novel is about a family in the early 1900s that moved to South Africa. The younger daughter of the family, Ingrid, is really caring and protective of her older sister, Margaret. There's a lot of political tension and trouble in South Africa, and the family quite abruptly have to move back to Germany. Margaret becomes engaged to be married, but on the day of her marriage, she disappears. So the novel is about her trying to discover what happened that day and what happened to her sister. Ben Ferguson is such a wonderful storyteller, uh, so I'm really excited to read this new novel. Next is a novel I already read called The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. She's a debut writer, and this is published by Picador. So I read this book and talked about it in my reading vlog when I went to A House for Essex, which was a really appropriate location because it was remote. And this is the story of uh, when London becomes flooded, a woman who gives birth has to find a new safe place to live with her child as the civilization is sort of collapsing around her. It's such a strong, powerful story, so I really recommend it. The next two books are very writerly type nonfiction books. First is The Boy Behind the Curtain by Tim Winton, and uh, this is published by Picador, so obviously this is a proof copy, uh, but this is what the final copy will look like. Tim Winton is a really excellent Australian writer. I read his novel Breath, uh, which is so beautiful. I love this book so much. He just has a gorgeous writing style. And look at this beautiful cover. Uh, but I'm not talking about this book. I'm talking about his new book of essays, which are really personal essays, how his mind was shaped by his class and faith and the environment around him. So I'm eager to read about his life and the process of his development. Next is Letters to a Young Writer by Colin McCann. This is published by Bloomsbury. So Colin McCann is a very well-regarded Irish writer who, crazily, I have never actually read. Even though I absolutely love Irish writing, I try to make it a point to be up on all the current Irish writers, but um, I've still not read any of his books. Uh, so if you've read him and enjoyed him, uh, please let me know where I should start. But this is a book of practical and philosophical advice about the writing life. I think everything from, like, finding an agent, inspiration for writing, and everything in between. I know there's a lot of aspiring writers of you out there, uh, so I think this would be a really handy guide. Next are two exciting thriller type books. The first is a much anticipated follow-up, Into the Water by Paula Hawkins, who wrote the phenomenally successful The Girl on the Train, a novel which I didn't actually read, so I don't have any particular expectations about her writing style. I'm hoping my experience of this will sort of be like uh, Jesse Burton. Uh, I read Jesse Burton's second novel, The Muse, uh, even though I didn't read her first, really popular first novel. And everything I heard was that this second novel, uh, her writing style was much stronger and more confident. So even though I haven't read the first book, I'm sort of hoping that this book is an even better novel than the first. It's about a woman who gets a call from her sister, which she doesn't take, and a few days later, her sister dies. So I think the story is about her journeying back and picking up the pieces and trying to figure out what happened in her sister's life and revisiting her own past 
and the dark, troubling things in it, especially a very sinister body of water. So yes, this is very exciting and I'm looking forward to it. Next is See What I've Done by Sarah Schmidt, and this is published by Tinder Press. This is the fictional story of a real-life woman called Lizzie Borden, who in the late 1800s was accused of killing both of her parents with an axe. And so this novel recreates the whole story around that mystery of what really happened. I think it sounds like a really gripping and chilling read. Next are three books which all deal with a sort of modern retelling of classical myths. First is Strange Heart Beating by Ellie Goldstone, and this is published by Grant Books. And how beautiful is this cover? It sort of takes as its inspiration, I think, the myth of of Leda, who I think uh, Zeus like dressed himself up as a swan and had sex with her and then Leda uh, gave birth or she lay uh, two eggs. However this is a story about a man named Seb and his beautiful wife Leda is killed by a swan. After her death he finds some letters correspondence that she was having with a man who he doesn't know and he goes to try to trace who this man is and the story of his wife's past that he had no idea about. I think he travels to Latvia, uh, which is actually a place that I'm always really interested in because part of my family history is Latvian, so I'm curious to see what she makes of that landscape. Also, the um, back of the cover has quotes from both Lisa McNerney and Sarah Baum, two of Ireland's greatest new writers and whose books I love, so I really trust their opinions. The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes, and this is published by Mantle. So this is a retelling of the stories of Oedipus and Antigone, and the sort of peripheral female characters in those stories, and tells it from their points of view, I think. I always really love books that pick out the historical perspectives of people who haven't previously had a voice. So I think this book sounds so good, and another beautiful cover. Next is House of Names by Calm Toybin, and this is published by Viking. Uh, it's another book that I don't have a physical copy, but I have a digital copy, so this is what the cover looks like. I love Toybin's writing. Uh, he's written so many great books. Some of my favorites, I think, like The Master is one of my all-time favorite novels. In this book, he tells the story of Agamemnon. I have trouble saying that name, Agamemnon. But anyway, that man was uh, from Greek mythology and he was a great warrior and leader. So in this novel, Agamemnon, <laughs> that man, uh, goes into battle and in order to successfully win the battle, he offers up a sacrifice of his daughter. He wins the battle and everyone's happy, he's triumphant, but then later on his wife and family find out about what he's done and there are bad consequences from that. I don't think Tobin has done a story like this, a sort of modern retelling of a mythological story. I mean, he did the story of Mary, which was a novel told from the perspective of Mary, mother of Jesus, which was actually a novel that I wasn't too crazy about, but I think this new novel sounds really exciting. When Light is Like Water by Mary McCloskey. This is a proof copy, so uh, I'll show you a picture of the finished copy. This is a story of an American woman who comes to Ireland, has a whirlwind romance, falls in love, gets married, but has an affair, and moves back to America. And then many years later, she contemplates this brief, intense period. It's sort of interesting because I think this sounds almost like a reverse story of Calm Toybin's novel Brooklyn, about an Irish woman who goes to America and has a romantic crisis and crisis of national identity about whether she wants to stay in Ireland or America. I don't know if it's actually anything like that, uh, but it has really promising blurbs from Colin McCann and Anne Enright, uh, who is another Irish writer that I just absolutely love. So this is being published by Penguin Ireland, and I'm really looking forward to it. The Last Painting of Sarah DeVos by Dominic Smith. This is published by Alan and Unwin, and it's about a woman in the 1600s whose daughter dies and she creates a painting out of all the grief and emotion that comes from that. And then many years later, in the 1950s in New York, a man has this painting and there's an aspiring female artist who makes a forgery of it. So it's about their stories. And I really enjoy novels that portray how art and paintings, how the meaning of them changes over time. Just thinking back on Jesse Burton's novel The Muse. So I think this sounds like an excellent book and it comes with a blurb by Lauren Groff 
whose novel Fates and Furies I just loved. The Nothing by Hanif Qureshi, and this is published by Faber and Faber. So I saw Hanif Qureshi give a reading from this. It's about an elderly, well-respected filmmaker who is just sort of toddling around his apartment and considering the mess of his life. I have a real soft spot for stories about old men uh, that are sort of looking back on their life. I guess part of me feels like, oh well that'll probably be me one day. <laughs> but this is a novel which uh, has a lot of dark humour and insight and Qureshi is a beautiful writer. All That's Left to Tell by Daniel Lowe and this is published by Picador. Uh, so obviously this is another proof. This is the story of Mark who is taken hostage in Pakistan and each night a woman named Joseph comes to visit him, uh, trying to pump him for information. But gradually they start sharing personal stories and Mark's grief over his daughter who died and whose funeral he missed. Gradually over time they start to tell each other stories uh, about this daughter until the point when Mark isn't really sure what the truth was anymore. I think this sounds like a really sensitive, interesting novel about memory and familial relations and I'm really looking forward to it. And finally a novel that sounds like a really personal and beautiful novel that has a wonderful title. It is called Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman and it is published by HarperCollins. I just keep wanting to like repeat that like Eleanor Oliphant is fine. She's she's completely fine. She's fine. I like the way the title is trying to like convince us of this like emotional stasis. It's about an ordinary woman who goes through the routines of her daily life and I was really touched and moved about how the author said that she wanted to write about loneliness, particularly loneliness in young adults, how we can quite quickly get stuck into a routine uh, once we get a job of going to that job and going home and then if we're slightly socially awkward finding it quite difficult to actually make friends which is a real problem and the state of loneliness is something I like to occasionally explore on my blog because you know it's called Lonesome Reader. I mean quite stereotypically as readers we're quite often introverted and so are more prone to loneliness than I think other people. So I think this sounds like a really touching exploration of that state of being. And it comes with blurbs by great authors, uh, which you probably can't see uh, because it's white, by authors like Kathy Retzenbrink and Joanna Cannon and Fiona Barton. I think this sounds like a really moving novel. So those are all the new books that I'm really excited about reading in May, uh, but which ones spark your interest? Let me know in the comments below and let's have a chat about what books you're excited about reading. Thanks for watching everyone and happy reading!